This IWI Masada pistol is outstanding. It is excellent. I know we have a lot of great options. I have a couple on the table. So many good options. And it, I, I know, I, I think what you think. I'm like, well, do we really need another polymer pistol? Uh, you know, I, I, I get you. And for whatever reason, you have companies like IWI coming into the game. I mean, Jardine and I talked about it when we were reviewing the FN 509. That was like two, three years ago. Even back then, is a ton of options. And so it's really a good time to be a pistol shopper. Yes, if you buy this and you have Glocks or maybe you have CZs, it's a different system. It is proprietary. That is a downside. But dang, it's a great pistol. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just leading off of that. Usually I'll build more drama, but not in this tabletop. I'm just telling you, it's a great pistol. So sorry, Mr. Credit Card. The good news is this is a value pistol. I mean, it retails for like 470, 480. That's just retail. It'll street about 385. And, and let me tell you, dudes, for that price, I'm, I'm going backwards. Obviously, would I buy it? I'm going backwards. Yes, I would buy it. For that price, it is a no brainer. It's a no brainer. And I just finished with another pistol. I actually gave it an update. I loved it too. It's also what I consider a value pistol. CZ P10C. The whole P10 line is outstanding. I'm not going to take anything away from those reviews. It's awesome. Awesome. Problems fixed. It's running great. Yeah, it's it's awesome. 385? Dude, that's amazing for the pistol like this and all the features we're going to look at here. Thanks to Gunnies, the great American gun store for loaning me this gun, which I may buy and put it in as a cast member for TMP. Great competitive option for tabletop, especially for guys and gals who don't have a ton of money to put into their go to war pistol. Gunnies, yeah, I checked it out. Thank you to them. I did not go to IWI. They did not send me this pistol free. This is not third party advertising. It's completely honest, fair. And I don't think IWI would have answered my phone calls anyhow. <laughs> if I would have called, hey, can I get a Masada for review? They, they said, what's your name? Nothing fancy. Click, hung up on me. That's because they're X95. I didn't really care for that much. Not that it's not reliable, relatively accurate, but I, it really didn't you know, push the ball downfield in comparison to this gun. A go to war capable Tavor. This is a cast member. It's pretty excellent. It's heavy. Heavy, but the rest is pretty good. It is a great bullpup. I'll say what I always said. I'm not like a super bullpup guy. I'm not. I'd rather shoot an AR-15. But as far as bullpups go, the track record on this with us, just us, like flawless. It's flawless. You put a Timney trigger pack in your Tavor, I know it's expensive. But after that, it fixes the trigger problem, and you're, you're going to be happy. Other than the weight, it's heavy. The Tavor. There's the watch for the review. A Swiss legend chronograph with a nut and fancy hands mod. So this is not the second hand. It's a chrono hand. I'll start it for you. So I painted that fluorescent orange. And I believe I just taped these hands. I peeled off the silicone strap, and this is a really nice padded leather strap I bought out of eBay. All right, let's get going. Tabletop review, IWI Masada. I have reviewed multiple guns from that co company. I mostly like them, X95 notwithstanding. Uh, not that I hated the X95, I do not. But I just, like I said, it, it, they had to lengthen it and do some other changes to make it legal for the US market. I just think it lost a lot of its charm when it came across the ocean to us. It's just not that great. Um, as far as SAWC goes, okay, in in comparison to this, it's about the same as this one. Uh, anyways, other guns which I have reviewed, the Galil Ace. Uh, that is excellent, also heavy, and of course this one that I just showed you, the Tavor. And I think that's it. I haven't reviewed the Jericho. It too has a great reputation. Every gun I've talked about has a really good track record. Ace, Galil Ace, great track record. Tavor, great track record. Jericho, great track record. I have shot it, but I haven't reviewed it for TMP. That's kind of the theme that I've seen in IWI. Really built well, 
uh, not necessarily inexpensive except for this Masada um, but great track rec records very reliable and probably on the heavy side not probably it is they are on the heavy side the Tavor the X95 the Jericho I think that's steel framed right yeah it's heavy it's good to see that IWI broke the SAWC cycle with this get ready boys and girls 26 ounce pistol 26 ounces what gun have I always talked about over the last 13 years in TMP that is the standard of measure which I have always advocated companies please match the weight of this pistol which one has it been the Glock 17 nothing fancy that is correct the Glock the Glock. It's like 24 and a half ounces. You put a mag in it right around 25-ish. This gun matches it. The Masada. So, SAWC, golf clap. Golf clap. Great job, IWI. So, with this gun, they're getting it. I, I just wish they would have done it to the Tavor. The Tavor weighed like 7.5 pounds, 7 pounds, 4 ounces. Uh, and do whatever you have to do to get to that weight. Here I am repeating what I said in the review. You're talking... It would own the bullpup market. It would. But it's, it's chunky. Bullpups, for whatever reason, are always heavier. Heavier. Masada. Now, this is a chassis system for what you might call restricted states. In other words, they can register one gun. Uh, by the way, Nothing Fancy says, If you're given a chance, never register. Thank you. But it may be in... Rule of law, you'd register, gotcha. So it's going to be a, a steel chassis and a polymer frame. And so you can take it out. We're not going to do this on a tabletop. I don't have time. i got other fun, funner things to talk about. Yeah, so you could take it out, put different grip modules on it. As of yet, I don't think IWI has created such, but they could. They could turn, this is a full size, more or less a full size, maybe Glock 19-ish size. But then you go with a compact, you just put your chassis in it, a la SIG P320, a la SIG P250. In, in the year, I talked much about all that. I did kind of downplay it. I was like, for me, a chassis pistol doesn't make a lot of sense, but I'm not living in a restricted state. Or one where I'm limited how many serial numbers I can register. If it's state, city, whatever. I know, I don't like it either. But there are certain folks that live under that, and for them, maybe it makes sense. And maybe not even in America. It could be a different country. And so they have a firearm certificate, and that's one serial number. And is the Masada getting exported? I don't know. I'm just spitballing. I, I don't know. But right now, I only see this version. Will they come out with different colorations? Um, hard to say. Now, I'm really going to, again, say a lot of great things about the gun. In fact, I can't think of anything negative I want to say about it pretty much for the price level will it take off and sell well that that's that's the question I would really like to say yes I would really like to say yes uh, I really can't say that definitively however because it's it's kind of late to the game a lot of guys have their systems already are they going to add like I said at the intro an additional system mm, hard to say Hard to say. I would really like this pistol su to succeed, stand the test of time, different variations, different colorations, different special editions. You betcha. You betcha. So here we go with features. How did it shot? I've already answered the last question because, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm putting together an anti-climactic video this time. Whatevs. Uh, we took this on multiple outings. In fact, uh, this uh, went on Soldier Boy with us and basically what turned out to be a blizzard it was freezing rain, and then it turned into blizzard. We shot the Masada. A uh, couple outings in the desert. It, it had a lot of rounds put through it. I'll, I don't know, I'll guess 600, 700 rounds shot through it, something like that. Purchased by TMP Patreon. Thank you very much. The reason I still make videos, TMP Patreon, since 2017. Isn't that when I started it? Yeah, I know it's not perfect, but it's working for now, so... Join Team P Patreon if you want to support what I do here. There you go. If you don't, still love you. Uh, a lot of great dudes over there. And by the way, the full flow of the Team P content is on Patreon, not on my A channel. You're getting about one third to one fourth of what I create. I've been saying that, but guys don't seem to understand that. 
I mean, met guys last week and I was like, hey man, how's it going? They're, oh, I love your stuff. I love this view, uh, video. And he talked about a video that's on a channel. I was like, are you TMP Patreon? Not that I'm soliciting, I'm asking, are you seeing the full flow? And he wasn't. He's like, what? And I told him all the stuff I've been doing. And anyways, go over to TMP Patreon. You'll see. Enough said. So multiple outings, you bet. I got a lot of data, a lot of opinion. You're sensing my enthusiasm already. It's dirty from the desert. And by the way, this is pre-shoulder surgery, and my shoulder surgery comes up pretty darn quick. So I'm in a big push right now to do a lot of GRV, some KRVs. I'll have stored up content, and I'll be editing with one hand, my offhand, like I do other things. Yeah, I went there. So during the recuperation period, I don't know what I'll be able to do. It won't be shooting. I can't shoot. It's going to be some months, bros. So it is what it is. That's from the KTM Oregon Deer Crash. And again, that's Patreon. And I actually have a debrief on what happened and how it happened, what I could have done better and all that stuff. On to the pistol. Features. The first thing I haven't even mentioned yet is a Streamlight TLR-8. About time I got another laser light combo in the project. Uh, I don't know if I'll review this separately. I might. I'm really impressed with it. It is so excellent. Uh, so we've got the light and the laser. You can see it right there. Easy to zero on your iron sights. And that's all I do. I just take the mini Allen wrench that's included. And you can see the, hole, the adjustment holes here. And I'll just adjust it and float that little red laser dot right above the front sight. Of course, looking through the rear sight groove as well. I don't know, about 10 yards. And it worked good. And Soldier Boy was shooting it. Perfect. So this is recommended. I will definitely put a link to this and maybe another Streamlight product. They have updated their line. It's great to see Streamlight not sitting around. They continue to push the line uh, on these really cool aiming modules and light modules. And I think for what you're getting, they're pretty inexpensive. So there you go. And I, as far as I know, most of our outings was accomplished with this on the gun. And I didn't put any insert on it. It's just a standard, it's a four slot pick rail on the Masada. I just clamped it off the races. I didn't I didn't shoot like I normally do, hooking my finger around the trigger guard. My, I had to do you know, the standard hold. That should make some guys happy. Uh, and it just works great. I just love this module. I, it's, it's so good if I bought this pistol. I don't know if I'd ever take it off unless I was gonna put it in a holster because then I have to obviously get something that's uh, acceptable to that. Great trigger guard here, dudes, on the Masada. Big, open, it accepts gloves. You can see that in the Soldier Boy inset video I'm putting on there. Uh, really excellent. It's it's the same thing I've said about these two other guns. And you know which one this is. We'll talk about this. But I've shown you the P10, right? It's the same thing. I mean, it's almost identical, isn't it? Squared, we got an undercut. This is a P10C. Undercut, so you can get a really nice high grip. My grip probably sometimes was so high I'm like actuating the slide release. So if that happens, that's what it is. I'm just bumping it. I, I do that sometimes. I need to improve. I, I need to get better. I, I totally do. Um, the trigger is very Glock-like in its construction. So you kind of have a little safety paddle in it. I don't see any flex in it. It's metal. It's not plastic. I don't hate plastic triggers. But one thing I've talked about forever is I just don't like trigger flex. And once upon a year, the M&P series were notorious for this. They've gotten better. I, I don't, don't sense any of that with the Masada at all. Uh, the trigger is really nice. And I think I will pull it for you guys. I do have my trigger scale here. It is the Lyman trigger scale, which I do like very much. We had a TMP here who works for the company. I remember his comment years ago. He's like, oh, dude, you're showing our... Our Lyman trigger scale, you should see around, I don't know, five pounds. Yeah, there you go, 415 on that one. The company's, I think, saying around five pounds. And uh, man, I like the trigger, I really do. It's pretty consistent, look at that. It may have smoothed out because we shot it so much. I, I read some criticisms uh, post-testing in the desert on the Masada trigger, and I was like, what are you talking about? I, I, dude, some reviewers are just out to lunch. They're coming out with these con contrarian opinions just because it seems like. I love it. I think it has a really crisp break. I don't think the reset is like super, super quick right there. But I'll tell you what, I rarely shoot to reset 
Anyhow, neither do you. That's a competitor thing. Let's get honest. God, I've been saying that for so long. I shoot to reset, and I'll take a guy out shooting. He's not shooting to reset, and, and he's not hitting. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Hey, I shoot really fast. Yeah, but you're not hitting the target. Here's your grip. It does come with interchangeable back straps. Push that pin out, slide it out. I didn't change them out. It looks like it'd be a pretty straightforward affair. I actually like the stippling on it. I would call it medium, the stippling. And this is all smooth up here. Um, would I improve the traction on this gun? Not initially. I'd probably shoot it several times and, you know, I'd just probably let it roll. And that's what I've done with these two guns on the table. I haven't really changed it. Although the CZ P10C has amazing kind of RTF texturing from the Glock series. It's just fantastic. I love it. Yes, this gun does look like other guns. It To me, and I think I said this in the desert, it looks like a cross between a H&K VP9 and an SR9 by Ruger. That's that's what it looks like. Or maybe a W9, the Smith & Wesson. You take a v, VP9 and they mate, maybe they have this gun, which ain't bad. By the way, I like that Smith & Wesson. Go watch my review on that. A mate, that's a value pistol. I mean, that's like 200 bucks. If you buy it used, maybe even less. Here's your magazine release, uh, pretty much perfect. By the way, this is a great ambidextrous pistol. So you have mag release on the opposite side and you don't have to fool around swapping it out. And nor did I find this to be obtrusive like I do on some other pistols. So sometimes we have ambi controls and you can dig into my Hall of Fame combat pistol or just go to the one uh, pistols reviewed. And you'll see in those reviews that I, if they're bulky, I'm gonna get on them. Yeah, I want to get the FMP9. I think was a, a violator of that by FN. I didn't like it in the day. Low profile slide release. I didn't have a problem with it. I think it's better than the Glock one. You can see how it protrudes out on the side. This is your takedown lever, slide release, all the controls. Thumbs up from nothing fancy. I I can't improve on them. It doesn't need anything. If aftermarket accessories come out, I, I wouldn't waste time or money replacing them at all. Notice this, the cutaway portion of the lower grip. I guess that's in case your, your magazine, which by the way is 17 rounds, which is awesome. If it ever gets stuck, you can rip it out. It's got your nice polymer base plate right here. So excellent. Uh, I like that. It's cool. We've seen some other guns like that. The P10C to some degree is like that. The, the grip is just fantastic as far as how it feels. And I wouldn't say it's cutting edge. It's it's basically going off what the competition has done. I love the grip of the VP9. You guys know what this is already, right? It's a v, it's a PPQ, long slide PPQ. I love the grip of this one. It's just fantastic. One of my all time favorite grips. Well, what do you know? You you put them side by side, they're pretty similar. Same angle, same ergonomics, except this one has no finger grooves, which you might like better. This has really shallow finger grooves, and I guess finger grooves are not cool anymore. Truth be told, I'd rather not have them as well. But if they're there, like on a Gen 3 Glock or something, I'm like, okay, I can adapt. If you have really huge or fat hands, I don't know if they're going to work. Not so much. That's the grip. There's your beaver tail. Everything is squared away here. I don't see anything that I go, oh, this is jacked up. I would re really wish they'd change this. Another thing I like about the Masada is I feel that it is a trim pistol. Okay, let's measure it. I'm going to put my micrometer on here. And since we know the other measurements in inches for other pistols, I'll, I'll measure it uh, in inches. Usually, I've been doing millimeters lately. So 1.18 inches is a Glock. And I'm just going to measure the slide first. So we're 1.05. If we go to the ambi controls, we're 1.35 inches. So yeah, that definitely adds uh, some width to it. But the most of the gun is right here, like 1.09 inches. That's a pretty trim pistol. It, it really is. So awesome. Um, the Steyr M9A1, which I've shown on table, that's kind of a fatter pistol, but it does look fatter than it really is. That's what he said, nothing. Yeah, and so... More and more, though, I think people are waking up to the fact, hey, a trim pistol is a good pistol, and I wouldn't necessarily, bouncing to POU, classify this as a carry pistol, but you might. I've sure carried the Glock 19 a lot over the years, totally. By the way, this is a honey badger and small. It's going to be the featured knife for this GRV. Here's an embedded 
knife review. Love this knife. Flat ground, 8CR13 MOV. Look at that choil, man, how it's perfectly gimped. Honeycomb plastic scales. It doesn't, it's like 40 bucks. I'm a value guy. Deep carry pocket clip. You can put zip ties in that hole to deploy it. It's just fantastic. I love the honey badger. Then we have an Israeli, since IWI is Israeli, A4 Skyhawk. Easy model. 172nd scale, super cool camouflage pattern. Couple AIM-9 Sidewinders on there. A4 was such a cool plane. Really cool plane. Uh, you can go watch Top Gun and they use it as the Op 4. Uh, I think they had some Skyhawks running around. It's not an afterburning. It's not super fast. It's not super survivable either. If it takes some hits, it'll go down. But it's very small, adequately uh, maneuverable for sure. And it fits easily on a carrier. Yeah, it was really compact. A4 is just so cool. Okay, there you go. Back to features. Steel sights. I don't mind polymer sights. I've always said that. Standard three-dot variety. Um, do they have a lot of air in them? Yeah, we talked about that in the desert, too. We're like, eh. They kind of remind me of the PPQ sights. It's PPQ sights. Uh, these are aftermarket I put on. But the, the, the regular PPQ slot, uh, sights have a ton of air in the, in the back. Um, okay, you know. I'll deal with it. I, I The reason I like more precise sights is because what I do with these guns, I'm running drills on steel, okay, if we're honest. That's what I'm doing, and I like more precision so I can hit more readily with my eyes at 7,500 yards, if and when we do that drill, and we do do it. Non-ledged rear sight, uh, I don't really care. I don't care. It's very Novak-ish, don't you think? It looks like a Novak sight. What I'm thinking, and we're going to look at accuracy, is they probably need a shorter front sight. This one's fairly tall. There's no threaded barrel versions of the Masada that I saw. And if there were, maybe a tall sight set would make more sense. The sight itself, we looked how narrow and trim it is. We have serrations on the front and back ends. Um, I never use those. Well, I shouldn't say never. I rarely use them. Great serrations, no issues there. And you'll see this as an OPR. Or, I'm sorry, oh, OPR, that's an Air Force thing. Operational Performance Report. Going back to my Air Force days. No, Optics Ready Pistol, ORP. And so in the box, you're going to get four adapter plates. It'll be for a Romeo Red Dot, a Venom, a Venom, Delta Point Pro, a Trijicon RMR. So four adapter plates. You guys know how I feel about Red Dots on a standard dude's pistol. I generally say don't waste your time. It's just adding bulk, weight, complexity to a pistol. Just learn how to shoot. There you go. And you can ignore it like I am here and just leave the, the standard plate on. It doesn't add any weight. Uh, but that's a current thing that is in vogue. You know, make your pistol optics ready. And good on them for doing it because I think it is a, you know, a competitive sales advantage. Notice the milling of the pistol. I don't see too many sharp edges. Nice rounded appearance, radius, and all the important ways. This part right here looks very m and style to me. It just does. Not that that's bad. This angle here reminds me of a Ruger American. Hate that gun, by the way. Hate it. I told you that thing wouldn't sell, and I was right. It has flatlined. No one's buying the Ruger Americans. I think anyone who bought it basically drove past a very deep ocean and threw it in. Good choice. That's this part right here. Big old extractor there. Notice you don't see any serial numbers because it's on the back of the gun here in the chassis portion. The takedown standard. Uh, you do have to pull the trigger. I'm not going to do it here, but you just basically do your safety check feel, uh, and then you would just rotate your takedown lever. Well, heck, I will do it because that portion I can do pretty easy. I'm just not going to take it out of the, the chassis. So safe direction, pull the trigger. This is what it looks like on the inside. And there is another thing I want to show you in here. Now, when I test guns, I should say we test guns, the crew and I, we get so freaking busy out there. I mean, it's really like one thing to, to, to the next. Sean, the TMP, was helping me with this gun, and, and I was like, hey, man, am I working you too hard? He's like, no, it's, but it's a lot. There's, there's no breaks. This is important to realize because sometimes we don't break a gun down and pre-lube it. We just take it out of the box and we shoot it. This is how we shot the Masada the entire test cycle dry it, it came that way and i didn't even check it 
But you know what? It was running 100%, so I didn't have to check it. So how's that, Glock? <laughs> how's that, Sig? How's that, Walther? Dry, and this thing was running with all types of loads, 124s, 115s. I didn't, didn't have any 95s. All the jacket and hollow point loads I shot out of it were great. Yeah, it's something. It's kind of interesting. Flat spring, captive recoil spring here. No big surprises. Takes down. There's your ejector. Standard stuff in there. Test fire. No magazine safety. We like that a lot. Looking at the top of the gun. That's pretty much features of the Masada. Feature length pistol review. Oh my gosh, it's fun though. We're having a good time. I loved how this gun shot, guys. I really did. In fact, everybody else who shot it also loved it. Now, is it better than what's out there? Is it better than a PPQ? No. Is it better than a P10C? No. Is it better than a Glock 17, a Glock 19? Mm, depends on your viewpoint. The grip is better, the trigger's better, but we've all shot Glocks for so long. You know, it's kind of like we're, like, we're so used to Glocks. We shoot them well, most of us do. And I love my Glocks. I, I still will always say the Glock is a standard of measure. They're just awesome. But in some ways, the Masada's better. Ergonomically, the feature set's better. It has a, you know, ORP, good to go. I think the trigger's metal. The sights are metal. It's set up for ambidextrous use right out of the box. It's got a cutout on the on the magwell the the grip and eh, that's debatable but i think most people would agree holding the masada so it's thinner through this circumference it's better kind of what i said about the ppq it's a sniper's pistol it's just awesome so we loved how it shot fast follow-up shots 100 percent reliability even in the snow the wind the rain the dirt we dropped it in the dirt like twice. Not in the mud, but it was when it was dry. We dropped, that's why all this dirt's all over it. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Desert testing in progress. <laughs> Perfect. Worked great. Again, no lube. 100% reliable, fast, soft to shoot. It's oh, awesome. Love the trigger too. Like I said, I don't know where guys are getting that from. Oh, and did I mention it has a cold hammer forged polygonal rifled barrel? And this 26 ounce Go to war pistol? Oh, I didn't? Oh, I did? No, I didn't. Okay. Now you know. And when you have something like that, you'll get accuracy like this. Here comes your target. I'll just show you this one. There's 147 uh, jacketed hollow points. Uh, by the way, I have a note here. Shoulder. So I have a double torn rotator cuff shooting these. It was freaking painful. I ain't going to lie to you. It was hard. And you may see me rubbing my shoulder, complaining like a little girl out there. That's why. 10 yards standing. This isn't seven. This isn't five yards. This is 10 yards operationally with a busted shoulder with a Masada. I would say that's pretty good. Look at this. Damn. That's freaking awesome. And, uh, you'll see inset video for proof positive. I don't ever make this stuff up. You'll see the distance. Awesome. Plus P, 115 grain JHPs. It's basically shooting, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. Look at this group right here, dudes. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I don't know what happened. I wrote single on it. 115 JHP, JHP. These are all great groups for 10 yards. However, I said excellent trigger here. Like you see, shoots low right. So that's why I say uh, it needs a shorter front sight. You, so you always chase your shot. So if they're shooting lower, you need to lower your front blade. It needs a shorter front sight. Hey, IWI, you need to make different sight heights available. You know, could you grind it? Um, maybe a little bit, but then you get into the area of that white dot. You know, if you were to mill that front sight down. Plus, you got to be really careful when you do that. You might grind too much, ruin your whole front sight. And yes, I have done that. I said, similar to VP9? Question mark. And I would say, yeah. By the way, the VP9 is awesome. I think the VP9 is fantastic. Shot fantastically. I really... I don't have any criticism on how it shot, Trigger. Mag release, reliability, accuracy, especially with a TLR8 at night, super compact. It doesn't even extend past the muzzle. Thumbs up. Competitive options. I've shown you two. 
the CZP10 series is fantastic. I can't say anything bad about them. You may have to invest in an Apex, Apex Tactical mag release. And by the way, that's what this is. Sticks out further. It solves the mag problems. It was more money. It was more time. We shouldn't have to do that. The latest generations, as I understand, have solved much of that. It's a great, great gun. Notice a very low slide profile of the P10. Go watch my update on it. Uh, I think it's Tactical Doodle and I in the bunker. PPQ, bro. It's more expensive, I think, than the Masada, but dang, I love the PPQ. I really like the long slide version of it. I can't say anything bad about the PPQ. Uh, the Taurus full-size 9mm's for value guns are pretty darn good. Uh, the Breda, what is it, the ARX, APX, whatever the heck it is, FN509. Uh, there's so many great guns out there. Just pick your favorite flavor. Would I add this to an existing system? Like I said earlier in the video, it is proprietary. It uses proprietary magazines. Everything's proprietary. I'm not sure if it... The sights are interchangeable with any other pistol. I don't know. That is a downside. <clears throat> Another downside, it is young. I mean, I've always said here on Tabletop that there's really no replacement for track record. That takes time. It takes the pistol going into thousands of users' hands, and then we find out what's up, what's really up. And I said that about the PPQ, and what do you know? Now, the PPQ has a track record. It's, yeah, it's awesome, as I predicted. There you go. I had to wrap it up, man. It's freaking 34 minute <laughs> GRV. Good times, though. Make sure you subscribe to Patreon. Make sure you subscribe here in YouTube. Uh, I'm still using it for now. Click that notification bell, and the work goes on. Uh, be happy with your Masada. It is freaking outstanding. Nothing fancy. Switch and hit that one from where you're at. Nice trigger pull. Hit. Square up to that one. Closer. Nice. You like? Uh, I like it. I like it. It feels good. I like the grip. Trigger's really nice. Really like the trigger on it. And uh, sights are easy to see. Um, maybe a little bit of air between the sights. But, yeah, uh, I like it a little bit tighter than that too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, PPQ's that way too, though. PPQ yeah. has a lot of air. All right. Yeah. So it's. Uh, but the accuracy on it's great. All the misses were me. You know. Um, yeah, I like it. Like functions it. perfectly out here both in rain snow mud dust dirt it's been 100 percent nothing yeah iwi masada i like it i totally buy it i like it I, and there's a lot of great polymer pistols you've helped me test some sure yeah no i, I like it it's uh it, it matches up with all of them yeah it's got uh a little bit i think thick on the uh side profile there but uh i'll measure it and see what it is yeah i don't know it could just be perception it looks like it's a cross between like an sr9 and a vp9 in looks mm -hmm. just kind of yeah but uh yeah it grips well it really grips well i like the ergos it feels good in hand you get a good grip on it right on and i do like the trigger it's nice yeah, yeah. good job dude thanks yeah.